Hi, my name is Jason. I'm a full-time audio engineer and producer, and today we're gonna to talk about five big mistakes that I see beginner audio engineers make. We're not gonna talk about gear, we're just gonna talk about a few ways that you can get better as a beginner engineer. Starting off at number one, I see a lot of beginners not using reference tracks. Using a song to compare yours to is a great way to make sure you're on the right track and make sure you're getting a professional sound. I remember as a beginner myself, it was always frustrating because my songs never felt professional. I'd pick my favorite song or pick a song that sounded similar to the one I was working on and I'd be like, what are they doing to make it sound good? Or like, what's that kick drum sound like? Or what's that guitar sound like? And when I started to like try to critically think and critically match those things to my reference, that's when I started to break down these professional songs and really dissect them and be like, uh, I can actually do this. And my songs and mixes got a lot better once I started using a reference tracks. Having a little perspective is super important. The second mistake I see a lot of beginners making is just recording too hot. So if you record over zero, you're gonna clip your signal and it's just gonna become unusable. And I know that's super common knowledge, but I see a lot of people doing that on accident, like they're recording vocals and then the singer sings really loud and it clips out for a moment. And also it's really common for beginners to record like negative five, negative two, and everything's just super loud on the input side. So imagine your whole session, 15, 30, 80 tracks is all at negative two or negative five. You know, your output's definitely gonna be clipping. So there's a lot of science that goes into how you're metering your input loudness and what level that should be at. But as a beginner, I just recommend your peak or your loudest point in your instrument or vocal. I recommend that isn't above negative 15 to negative 12 on your meter. Number three, this might sound harsh, but I promise that I mean this in love, but I see a lot of beginner engineers just, just not using their ears. What I mean by that is you get in a session, you get in a room with other people, and you're writing a song, maybe you're by yourself, but there's a lot of new ideas coming out, there's a lot of energy, and there's a lot of excitement around this song, and it's easy to get caught up in that energy, which is a positive thing, but then the tonality and the sonics of the song suffer in the end and you go to mix it, or maybe you use a reference track at the end and you're just like, this just doesn't sound professional. I just really encourage you to sit down and, and constantly question yourself and be like, is this part useful for the song? Even in the middle of a writing session, I would encourage you to maybe just take a two minute break, throw on some headphones and just like mute everything, start from the bottom and just rebalance the track and ask yourself these questions like, is there enough mid-range energy or is the low end falling apart? You're gonna realize whether you're making smart informed decisions while you're writing. A lot of times I get in a spot where, especially on guitar or keys, where I'm throwing all these different parts in and then I sit back and I listen to it from a third person perspective and a lot of them are fighting each other or it's just not really complimentary to the song and so I end up cutting it later. So I encourage you to critically think in your writing sessions. Use your ears. Does all the sources match in the high end? Do they all match in the, in the mid range or are they fighting each other? By having these critical thoughts in the session, you're gonna save yourself a lot of heartache uh, when you're mixing and nothing really sits or there's a lot of masking or you have like an overpopulated frequency range of instruments. The fourth mistake I see is beginners and professionals alike, but beginners not checking their mix on reference speakers. This is one of the most important parts of making a song is making sure that it can translate to everybody. You know, whether they're listening on their phone or their laptop or TV or in their car, you want it to make sure that it sounds good on all those sources. And you know your client or future clients aren't gonna have high quality monitors like you do or good headphones like you do. They're probably gonna be listening on a laptop or on their phone. If your client doesn't have those things, the consumer definitely won't with their cheap headphones or whatnot. And you wanna make sure that your mix sounds good on every source. So what I recommend to beginners and professionals is to get like a little cheap computer speaker or I use the JBL Flip 4. It's got an aux in on the back as well. Just listening on something cheaper in the studio so you can make mixed decisions that are gonna translate everywhere. And the fifth and final mistake that I see beginners make is nothing is subtle in their mix, which isn't surprising. They're discovering what reverb is, what delay is, what EQ and compression is, and all these things are new to their ears, and so they hear it and they're like, I want more of that. 
but less is more. I remember when I was a beginner and I was with my mentor and I'd make a change, like I'd add more reverb and my mentor would always be like, no, like less is more, like make sure that you are keeping that in mind. And I'd be like, no, more is more. You know, like in my head, more just was better. And that might not always be the case. So I always recommend to make a decision and then ask yourself why you made that decision and just to check and make sure it was a positive, good decision. It's a good life tip as well. <laughs> you might get 40 to 50 decisions into a mix and on if those 40 to 50 decisions are all heavy handed, now you're probably not gonna be happy with your mix. So what I recommend is if you make a change, if you add reverb for say, add that reverb and then cut it in half. And if you're still happy with it being half as loud, just leave it there. If you're not happy, then definitely put it back where it felt the best. And always trust your gut and trust your ears. But remember, as people, as humans, we hear something new and we like it. But that doesn't mean it's always the best decision for the song. So if you make an EQ cut, make that cut where it sounds the best and then cut it in half. And if it still sounds good there, then just leave it there. Bad mixing decisions or over mixing decisions can just all add up as you make 100, 200 changes, and then it just sounds like trash. So those are the five mistakes that I see beginners make as audio engineers. If you're a beginner engineer and you're struggling with some of this stuff, I would love to talk to you about it. Definitely drop a comment down below and I'd love to chat. Be sure to subscribe for upcoming videos and I will see you in the next one.